Well, good evening, everyone. Um, thanks for joining me on this um, beautiful Thursday evening, November 5th of 2020, for our 4 H Club Treasures uh, training. And we have some participants with us tonight. I you won't see them as I am. You can see their names, <laughs> but as I am. Um, I am uh, recording, so we have everyone turn off their cameras. So I am going to go through the information for um, club treasurer officers. Uh, I guess I should introduce myself. I'm Mary Tiggs. I'm the, the I'm not the extension educator anymore. I am the county director of youth and human sciences program coordinator here at Shelby County Extension, and I am glad to be with you tonight uh, to go over this. I think it's really important uh, for our club treasurers to understand the process and procedures it's a pretty important job to be the club treasurer but it's also important for our club leaders and our parents of those treasures to be able to guide our young people so that um, they can do their job and do it well and learn something along the way so i am going to be doing quite a bit of screen sharing tonight but um, the first thing i want to start off with is um club account numbers so this is something that we're going to talk about a couple times throughout the evening about how that is that you know what your club account numbers are. So each club got these little cards. If you can see this in my um, camera here, this one's for the county council. Um, and it has two numbers on it. You're going to see this, that there's a revenue and a, a, a revenue deposit number and there's an expense voucher number. So those are really important to have. If you do not have your club account card, it's just a little piece of paper we've laminated. Um, if you do not have one of those, please let me know here at the extension office and I can make you these, I can give you the account numbers, um, whatever we need to do to get you that information. But this is very, very important for your club treasurer to have that information and put it on all of the documents so that the funds that you are requesting or the funds that you are depositing are credited or debited to the correct account. That was one of the big concerns when we made the switch over a year and a half ago to having all of the club accounts in the operating account here at the extension office was people wanted to be sure that they were going to know that their money was their money. And we absolutely want that to be the, the case. And so ensuring that you write your correct account number on the documents is, is vitally important, much like you would when you um, are at the bank. You want to make sure that it's in your account and not someone else's. So that is the first one. And again, if you do not have one of these little cards or if you um, don't know what the account number is, you know, please let me know and I'll get that information out to you. So I'm going to be doing some screen sharing. So I'm going to go ahead and pop on that. Okay. So you guys should all be seeing my. Um, uh, extension website. And so as you see this, you will see that I am on the 4-H page. And let me go back a page so that, or a couple pages here, so that you can tell exactly where I'm at. Um, so I am at extension.iastate.edu slash Shelby. And if you look right up here, there's a little tab that says 4-H and Youth. And I'm going to pop down to Shelby County 4-H and Youth. And it pulls up our 4-H page. On this page, you're gonna find a lot of information. Hopefully you guys all know where this um, is at and you guys have accessed this for information before, but in case you haven't, this is a good place for you to land. Um, you can see the 4-H newsletters here, um, the 4-H name and clover use, that's really important, um, especially for our club leaders and for those in leadership positions to understand how the uh, club and 4-H name can be used. If you're going to do club t-shirts, this is a really important place to look. Um, and then if people are interested in rolling in Shelby County 4-H, there's some information down on this tab. But I'm going to go right up here to the 4-H club officer information and click on that. And here we come. We're opening up to 4-H club officer information. Treasure is right up here at the top. You'll see that the very first thing on here is to check out the YouTube for more details. That YouTube video is almost two years old now. so. 
um, that's why we're re-recording it tonight. And so the new one will be posted um, as soon as I can get that up, that give me a week or so before I can get that uh, verified and, and posted. Um, but the first document that we're gonna look at tonight is our membership or partnership agreement. So if you just click on it and it will open right up. Um, if someone on the call can give me a thumbs up if you can see the partnership agreement. Okay, I'm gonna take that as you guys cannot see that. So I'm gonna stop share and I'm gonna pull up the partnership agreement. Sometimes these links um, don't want to um, share very easily. So you all have to pardon me as I um, okay. Now you should be seeing the partnership agreement. Can somebody give me a thumbs up if you can see that? Ah, thank you. Okay. Um, it's a great way to communicate using our little thumbs up tab there. So this is the partnership agreement that we use each and every year. We ask our 4-H clubs to sign a new partnership agreement. This acts as your signature card, much like you would do if you um, had an account at the bank. So each, like I say, each year you sign a new one, um, or whenever there's a change of leadership or treasurer in your club. Only those that are, have signed the partnership agreement will be able to sign the vouchers. Again, the vouchers are gonna be just like a check, and you um, have to have a signature card in order to do that. So we're going to go over some of the pieces to this, but you'll see on the second page here over on the right hand side of my screen that there is a line for the club treasurer uh, for the name and an email address. So um, some documents will be emailed to you. So that's why it's important to have an email address. And then there is a place for two leaders to have the emails also sent to them and they will also be the leaders that will be signing those vouchers so hopefully that um, makes lots of sense there for you to um, wh why we do that and, and what that purpose is for that so through the partnership agreement i'm not going to read this to you you guys are all very capable of reading but i am going to highlight a couple of items um, in this part down here, so I'm on the first page, it says extension will. So basically what it is, is extension will make a payment within 15 days. When the club submits a voucher request, and we'll go over what those are here in a little bit. When the club submits a voucher request, as long as it is complete and there's a receipt attached, we will make payment to the payee within 15 days. We're on a two week billing cycle here at Extension. And so that payment will be mailed out within 15 days, usually sooner, depending on when we get it. Um, the second part is that we will provide a financial report monthly by the 15th of each month. And that is what, again, these emails are for, is that um, you will get the, those um, emails sent to that email on this document. Uh, I'm not gonna go into 4-H online to pull that email, because um, that might be a different email that you want to use for this purpose. So if, um, if we ask that you put that email on there and make it so I can read it too, that's always helpful. Um, the second part um, is, I'm just, I have my notes here so I don't miss anything, um, is that we will accept photos or scans of receipts. And I think that this is really important. Um, you know, as club leaders, a lot of times we are asked to pay for different events and activities for our club. Um, and sometimes they get a little expensive, you know, and we don't want anyone to not ever get paid for that. And it's hard to keep receipts sometimes. Um, we try the very best we can, but sometimes we lose them. I'm gonna encourage club leaders when you have a receipt, um, you know, you get it from the store or from the pizza place or the bowling alley or whatever it is, take a picture of that because that will work um, if you do not have that original receipt. So that's just a little tip to just to kind of protect you too so that we're not um, uh, losing out on some money to the club because the club wants to reimburse you for that 
but we do need to have that receipt. Um, and then if you look on the second page, um, again, I'm not gonna read all of it to you, but just some highlights. Um, the club, so the club is going to use voucher request forms, complete with those account numbers. Again, don't forget, um, I'm gonna mention it several times because it's really important to have your account numbers on there. Um, and the payee information. And again, we're gonna take a look at that voucher request form here in a little bit and go over what I'm talking about. But that payee information is vitally important as well. Um, the club is going to ensure that the club minutes document the approval of all expenses. That is a requirement uh, by the state auditor. So we need to be ensure that um, that is in the club secretary's minutes. And then the club secretary's book must be turned in at the end of the 4-H year. Um, we, you will deposit all funds in a timely manner. No club is allowed to keep petty cash. That is in this document that you sign that you will not be keeping petty cash. Um, one thing about deposits that we talk about in here is if you are unable to come to the extension office to make a deposit in a timely manner, um, we're open Monday through Friday, eight to five, we do bank at Shelby County State Bank. And there are uh, branch offices all throughout the county. There's Elkhorn, Shelby, Portsmouth, Panama, Irwin, two in Harlan, I think that's all of them. Um, if it's not, I, I apologize. But there are branches throughout the county and they have night deposit as well. So if it comes to that you need to get this money deposited and you just can't make it into the extension office, and that's okay. Um, you know, you can always call and see, you know, like I'm here tonight. So um, there could be that possibility that we could be there at a, at a later time too. But give us a call um, and we can arrange it for you to make that deposit at the Shelby County State Bank after hours or even if it's during banking hours. Um, but, uh, but give us a call and we can work that out. Um, another item on the partnership agreement that I want to cover is that you would utilize fundraising request forms. And we're gonna go over those in a little bit as well. And you're gonna follow the financial guidelines. So, um, which I will show you where those are. So I'm going to get rid of this document and take you into our next one. And I'm gonna open this up. And again, I might have to stop screen sharing, but you guys are gonna let me know with a thumbs up here in just a minute, if you can see. It's an Excel document, so it takes a little bit longer to open up. And I'm gonna guess you guys can't see this, but I'm gonna try. Okay, can I have a thumbs up if you can see that, the um, budget sheet? Oh, great, thanks, Jenna. Okay, so. There is a budget sheet. It's very, very simple. You can see it's a very simple um, spreadsheet. So we ask that each club treasurer, along with the club leaders and possibly their programming committee, um, every club does that a little bit differently and that's just fine, but come up with some sort of a budget for the year. What is your expected income? What, well, where's your beginning balance? I'll show you where to find that in a little bit. Um, What's your expected income? What are those things that you do do fundraisers? Do you take in collections um, for club dues? How, would, how does that work with your club? So all of those things. And then what are your expected expenses? Um, do you have workshops? Do you do, you know, um, adopt a family at the holidays? Whatever that is um, that you can um, put into your budget, that's really helpful. Um, to have that. So that is one thing that you will put together as a club treasurer and you will put that in your treasurer's book at the end of the year. You'll put that uh, partnership agreement in there too. I don't think I mentioned that, but that goes in your treasurer's book. Okay, so going right down the um, website here, I'm going to click on the account deposit slip. And again, somebody gives me a thumbs up if they can see that. Thank you, okay. It's always interesting on Zoom because I can't tell exactly what you guys can see. So uh, thank you for helping out with that. So here's our uh, 4-H Club account deposit slip. Um, pretty, um, pretty easy to understand, I think, but go over a couple things on that. Um, again, um, give me the name of your club. It's really important um, to give me the whole name of your club because we have different 
Um, we have two Lincoln clubs, we have Lincoln Bluebirds, we have Lincoln Leaders, we have Northwest Leaders, we have, so we have a lot of clubs that have similar names in their title. And so we wanna make sure that that is getting credited to the correct club along with that account number. Um, I know I keep mentioning it, but it is really important to be in there. And then tell me where the money's coming from. Is it coming from the Smith family, the Jones family? Um, and then is it cash or check? If it's a check, we need a check number. And if it's cash, right, it'll indicate that it's cash. That helps in our accounting purposes here at our office. And then tell me what the purpose or the description for that is. If it's club dues, if it is for um, you know the, a t-shirt, if it's for a pizza party, whatever that is, give, give a description there and the amount. Then you will total that up. The club treasurer should sign this. And then someone, it doesn't have to be the club treasurer because I know that that's hard, um, but somebody can bring this into the extension office. When it's brought into the extension office, a county staff person will recount the money in front of you. So please plan accordingly that you will have um, a few minutes to um, stay as you um, drop that deposit off. We will count that and then we will give you a copy. We'll sign off on it and then we will give you a copy of this deposit slip for your records. And again, that goes in your club treasures book um, that will be evaluated. All right, so I think that one's pretty clear what we do with deposit slips. So um, I'm gonna go back. Okay. Um, and so next one up is the voucher request. So let me pull this up. And again, give me a thumbs up if you can see that. Okay, thank you. All right, so here we are to watch a request. Sorry, I'm gonna take a little drink here. I got talking too much, I get thirsty. All right, um, the club voucher request is probably the form that you will use the most. Um, again, very self-explanatory, but I think it does um, deserve a little bit of conversation. Again, your club name on there, your club account number. Now remember when we talked about on these little cards that you get, I don't know how well you can see that, but there is a revenue deposit a number, and then there's an expense voucher number. This is an expense because it's money going to come out of your account, but we put voucher on there so it matches up with the plan too. So important to get the right number on there as well. And then we need to know who the payee is. Who are we gonna write the check to? And we need their address so that we know where to mail that to. Um, so put that on there. Um, you will indicate the vendor or the name on the receipt, the item description, the club purpose, and the amount. So let's say, for example, uh, leader Susie Smith went to Hobby Lobby to buy some felt for a 4-H club um, Christmas party project. And so on here, the payee would be Susie Smith and give her, give your, her address. And then the vendor would be Hobby Lobby. The item description is felt for the 4-H Club Christmas program. And it was in the amount of $4.62. Okay. So you just fill that in. This part down here um, is very important. The minutes of the blank monthly club meeting reflects approval of this request. Each transaction, each voucher request needs to be approved by your club with a motion, a second, and a vote. That has been clearly communicated to your club treasurer, or your club presidents and vice presidents and secretaries um, if they attended the club um, officer training that we had in October. So if they attended the, that, that was clearly portrayed to them. If not, club treasurers or club leaders or parents, you know, emphasize that. But that is very important for our 4 Hs to make sure that that club treasurer has that information. Then the club treasurer, you're going to sign this, and the club leader. So whoever is on that partnership agreement, whoever is on there is going to sign as well. And then um, attach the receipts. Again, we prefer to have the original receipts. If you don't have that for some reason, an electronic version will do. If it's a picture or a scan, that's okay too. These you can drop off at the extension. We're happy to take them across the counter. Or if you need to email it to me, that's fine too. 
or most club leaders have my cell phone number. I'm happy to um, take those by text as well, if that works. So you just take a picture of it, text it to me, and it's done. Um, and again, those should be those checks should be mailed out to you within 15 days of our receiving receiving it completed. Now there are times where I have to send it back to a club because they're missing a piece of information. Um, so the clock does the 50 day clock doesn't start until it is received in our office completed. Okay, let me just want to make sure I'm not missing anything. I have lots of notes written down. I um, want to make sure that you guys are getting all the information. Okay. So club voucher requests, that is what they are. And then um, again, when you bring that into the office, we will make a copy of that for you to keep for your records as well, so that you um, have that for your book. Okay. And I don't know why my computer keeps doing. Okay, lost my website, sorry guys. I will go back to where I was supposed to be. Okay. Um, the next form I want to show you is the fundraising request form. So I'm going to open this one up and give me a thumbs up if you can see that. Thank you. Okay, so for each club fundraising request form, this is a fillable PDF, so kind of nice way to do that. So um, you can go ahead and fill this out. So when do you need to do this? Anytime your club is going to do a fundraiser. Are you gonna wait tables at Pizza Ranch? Are you gonna sell butter braids? Are you going to um, have, a, have a cakewalk? Um, whatever that is that you are going to do to raise money for your club. If it's the club just paying dues, that's not a fundraiser. Um, so you don't have to, you don't have to have one for that. But anytime that your club's going to do um, any activity that requires, uh, or that is in raising funds for your club, this needs to be completed. We prefer that they, we have it in the office one month prior to your event, um, because we know that you're going to start advertising it about one month prior to the event. And we want to make sure that we have all the pieces in place before advertising happens. Um, I don't see any reason that we would ever deny a fundraising request. There could be a couple of circumstances. Um, one of them is, you know, we have some clubs that have quite a hefty account balance and I, it, they would have to give me a good reason to do a, a fundraiser. If you're just doing a fundraiser to raise money, that's not a real great reason. Um, but on here, you can see that um, there's a the educational purpose. I don't believe that the educational purpose is always what the money is going to be used for. A lot of times we're raising money so that we can have a workshop or donate or whatever it is. We're gonna talk about donations a little bit. Um, but sometimes that, that purpose is, is not, has, doesn't have anything to do with the money. Sometimes it has to do with the process of raising the money. So is that um, you're gonna have a, a, a bake sale but you did a workshop and you learned how to bake pies or you learned how to decorate cakes and, and then you're gonna use those, you don't want them to just go away, so you're gonna have a fundraiser. Maybe it's a community event that you have participated in for years and it's a, it's a way to, for the community to support 4-H or to bring our community together. And so those types of fundraisers are absolutely fine even if you have a hefty balance in your account um, but we might have conversations about how to spend, what's the purpose for the money in their account, and what can we do um, to support our 4 agers and support, the, support their education through 4-H with those funds. So, um, but you fill this out and you send it into the extension office. I sign off on it, or extension employee um, signs off on it and gets it back to you and you are set to go. There is a post event part of this as well. So don't forget that if you fill this out to, but you've got to go back to that after your event is over and give me a little more information and send it back into us as well. So um, not, not a hard process, but that's kind of a new process for our county. It's not a new process for Iowa 4-H. 
but it is something, the form is new, um, but we've always wanted to know when these fundraisers are happening. So let me, I am just having one goofy time with my computer tonight. So I think I'm closing out documents when I shouldn't be. Okay, next form, treasurer's worksheet. Okay, so this is gonna open up in an Excel document and you guys can tell me here in just a minute. We'll see if it's gonna open. Okay, can you see the treasurer's worksheet? Oh, there we go. Can you see the treasurer's worksheet? Okay, thank you very much. Um, so the treasurer's worksheet is just what it sounds. It's a worksheet for the treasurer to use. And so how you do this is um, you can see the beginning balance. When, I'm just going to show you how this works. Let's say the beginning balance is $589.64. So that's in there. And we have income some, since our last meeting. Somebody played their club dues of $10. And uh, somebody else bought a t-shirt and that was $12. So you can see that there are formulas in here that add that for you. So really easy for us to use. And then we might have some expenses that we bought pizza. Remember, you're filled out a voucher request form and you have that approved in your uh, club minutes, your secretary's report. So the club pizza was um, $62 and 47 cents. Okay, so that calculates it all for you. This is really easy now when you go to your club meeting to give your treasurer's report. You stand up and you say our beginning balance was $589.64. We had income of $22. We had expenses of $64.47, leaving our ending balance at $549.17. So makes it really easy for you to give that treasurer's report. You can print this off. And again, that goes right into your um, treasurer's book that you're turning at the end of the year. The nice thing about this as well, if you want to, you can see down at the bottom, there are tabs. So this was for the October meeting, the November meeting, the balance does carry over. So that makes it really easy for our um, club treasurers to use this. This is just an Excel document. And so you can download that onto your computer or laptop and you can use that at home. Or if you want, you can just print off these sheets and fill them out by hand and that's perfectly acceptable as well, whichever way you choose to do that. But I do think that that's a really useful tool to use during the club meetings. Um, and also we wanna see that in your treasures book at the end of the year. Okay. So get rid of that one. Um, the, one of the last ones, annual financial report, is the document that we use at the end of the year to summarize everything that we have done throughout the year. And again, give me a thumbs up if you can see that annual financial report. Thank you. Um, oh, I need to change the dates on this. I will get that done. Um, so again, pretty simple, club name, account number, put both of them in there, um, treasurer's name, um, a treasurer's phone number, and this is for auditor's purposes, in case the auditor has a question. Um, I would not have given that information to the auditor, that would get blocked out, um, but then I would have that, in case we had a question on that and we needed to call. We'd probably call the, the club leader first, um, probably not going to call on club treasures. This is the form put out by Iowa 4-H. Um, and I, you know, I'm going to check because maybe it's updated, but it's going to look very similar to this. Um, but all you will do is take that information from your treasurer's worksheet and put in your income, your expenses, and your balance each month. So you can start off with your beginning balance, your income and expenses for each month, and end with your ending balance at the end of the third year, which is the end of August. So, um, and again, that goes in your um, treasures book that's turned in at the end of the year. So that one's not hard to do either. So um, lots, of, lots of these things are not hard to do, but it's helpful when you know how to do them. 
Um, a couple other things that you can see that are on this website that I think are useful um, are the Treasures Book Guidelines. I keep talking about this Treasures Book you have to turn in. Oh my goodness, here are the guidelines. It tells you exactly how we expect that put together. Guidelines, not a have to, but um, this makes it really simple for everyone to just be organized. Um, have a tab divider with your partnership agreement, have a tab divider with your yearly budget, have tab dividers for each month, um, and then put in there your worksheet, your deposit slips, your voucher request, and that monthly financial statement from your extension office. And we're still gonna go over this. Um, and then have a tab divider for your fundraising request, and at the end, your annual financial report. So again, not a lot of information on there, um, but useful so you know what goes in that book at the end of the year. There are some documents in here, mostly for club leaders, appropriate use of Iowa 4-H club funds. Um, there's some nice information in here. I encourage you to read through that um, so that you know what we mean by appropriate use of funds. It's for educational purposes. And again, education is not always about a workshop. Sometimes education is creating a sense of belonging that we learn um, in the 4-H equation. And so maybe that is building. And, and that's okay to do those kinds of fun things too. Um, so some good information on that. Um, revenue handling best practices for clubs is another document that is useful. Um, this is more of a Q&A, which I find helpful sometimes um, when we want to get those, those answers to our questions. And also some financial guidelines. This is put out by risk management. Um, just some things to keep in mind as you go through that. So again, those last three are mostly for our club leaders, but it's also good for club treasurers to look at those as well. Um, okay, so I have gone through everything that's on the website, and hopefully that makes sense to everyone and you know where to find those documents now. I am gonna switch over, and hopefully you guys will be able to see um, I want to show you what the club reports look like. Can everybody see this that says um, receipts and expense reports? Give me a thumbs up. Thank you. Okay, so, and I'm using the club that I'm the leader of because then nobody's, <laughs> so, um, we do, and then we have to explain, we have a hefty balance, but there are circumstances um, by that we have some grant money in there, so. Just when you look at it, you think, well, that's quite a bit of money. Well, there's some grants in there that we use for other purposes. So anyway, um, the things that I want to show you, um, let me find my notes here. Um, what I want to show you is how to read this report um, because it's not easy. It's not, it, I think it's a little bit confusing, but this is the way the report comes. So what I want to show you is, Looking at, I'm going to show you from, this wasn't the very beginning, but this is the first one I have available, is from the end of September. So this is the report that got emailed to our club treasurer and club leaders uh, the 1st of October. And you can tell that by this date right here. Hopefully you guys can see that, 9 30 19. So this was last year, so more than a year ago. Um, and you can see that at that point, we had not had any transactions in our account for the year. So our beginning balance up here was 470545, okay? And our ending balance is the same. Um, but what I want to show you is, I gotta, is in October, we had a couple of expenses. So our beginning balance was still 470545. We had a couple of expenses, um, Grandpa's Pumpkin Patch and Pizza. Um, so our ending balance was $43.96.24. $43.96.24. If I go to the very next month and I look at my beginning balance, $47.05.45. Oh wait, that's not the same. This number up here at the top is the beginning balance as of July 1st. We will operate on a fiscal year. So July 1 to June 30th is our fiscal year. This beginning balance is not your monthly beginning balance. 
your monthly beginning balance is your ending balance from the month prior. So I think that that's really important um, for you to understand that. And look at that, that first time you get those reports in the email, look at that so that you understand that. If it doesn't make sense, call me and we'll go over it again. Because I know I'm showing it to you on a screen tonight and it might, when you see that in a few days, you might go, now wait, what was she talking about? Um, so October, we had the beginning balance of 4705.45. We had expenses, or we had um, expenses of 309.21. So our ending balance was 4396.24. So again, in the, the November, so you can see it right up here in the right hand corner, that beginning balance at the top, you almost need to ignore it because that was the beginning balance as of July 1. Um, so, but you will notice again that these showed up in my November report. This is the December report. It shows up again. They are going to continue to show up each and every month. In the, whew, here we have a lot of expenses. So this is the report ending February 29th of 2020. Again, beginning balance, doesn't need anything. Um, but we had some income and then we had some expenses. But again, I want you to notice those from October are still on there because again, this is a fiscal year. So when I show you that this is the one, June 30th, you can see right up here in the corner, June 30th, these are, this is all of the income and all of the expenses. So this is our fiscal year and report um, that you will want to use. Um, so looking down at that very bottom number, 3725.57, and if I look, to, now this one's good, if I look to July, the July statement, 3725.57. So that ending balance at the fiscal year end on June 30th carried over to the beginning balance on July 1, but it doesn't the rest of the year. I know that seems very confusing. Um, again, when you get those in, in your inbox and you have questions on that, give me a call and we will look at that and I will go over it with you so that you can understand that. Because I do think that that's, I think that's probably the most confusing part about all of this with our club treasures. So, um, folks, I think that that is all I have for tonight. I'm gonna ask the people that have joined me live to stay on with me. We're gonna do a few um, Q and A's. I am going to um, stop my screen share and check to see if I have any, nothing in the chat. So I'm gonna stop recording. And um, again, those of you that are joining me live, please stay with me and we'll have a little bit of discussion. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching our video. If you have questions, be sure to give me a call here at Shelby Community Extension at 755-3104, or you can always email me at mtags at iastate.edu. Thanks so much.